Hey guys, what's going on? Let's talk about just shapes and beats. Now, I'm going to start this video by saying if you want to talk about anything except for shapes and or beats, you're in the wrong location. Go find yourself a different video. Just Shapes and Beats is a chaotic co-op musical bullet hell based on three simple things. Avoid shapes, move to kick-ass beats, and die repeatedly. Or well, that's what they claim on their Steam. So let's discuss. I managed to meet with Simon Le Chance. I'm going to call him Le Chance. That's probably a terrible pronunciation of the word. So Simon, if you're listening, I'm very sorry. I got to meet with Simon from Berserk Studio at CoxCon 2018. And if you want to hear my ramblings about that, I'll put a card up in the top right. But Simon really sold this game to me. He was showing it off and I got the chance to play it. Not only once, but twice because I enjoyed it so much. I knew I had to come home and buy it. So what sold this game to me? If it wasn't for the crazy music, if it wasn't for the crazy neon effects, the camaraderie you had between your guys, between the multiplayer situation where you, you would frantically try to get each other up, what sold this game to me? Well, it was all those things, and so much more. I really enjoyed this game. Just from the premise, looking at it, it was so visually pleasing to me, and the tracks were brilliant. So, let's get into game. When I first launched the game, I noticed there's a story mode, which I was quite impressed with. It's not something you typically expect with these kind of things. If they are there, they're kind of loosely thrown together. But we'll get onto that in a minute. What I did find quite interesting, and this is probably the biggest negative I have about the game, is that the playlist was completely empty except for the tutorial videos straight up. So if you bought the game and just wanted to get in, play with some friends and, and, and do some playlists, you kind of had to get through the story mode first. There wasn't really any other option for you unless you just wanted to play the same three songs on repeat. I didn't know this coming into it, but it didn't really affect me. I have no friends. I have friends. I have friends. This didn't really affect me because I wanted to play it solo when I first got into it. I think games like this uh, lend themselves to solo play as much as multiplayer. Typically because the saving mechanic on multiplayer is not available on the single player, making it harder, which is the kind of experience I wanted first going into this. Playing through the story mode. I expected very little. And when I say very little, I mean practically a non-existent story thrown on top of some music. It's not the case at all. Man, the story, like, was funny, it was sad, you, you had the feels... It was all over the place, and it kind of, it, well, it kind of made sense, it did make sense, it was actually wicked. So when you get this game, don't be too let down by the fact that you have to play the story mode to progress in the playlists, because it's worth it. It's absolutely worth it. When you get through the story mode, and I will try to avoid as many spoilers as possible, you get further challenges that when you meet, you unlock more tracks. Again, to me... Bit of a letdown, I like the fact that I could have existing, like all those tracks existing from the very start. But I get why it's there, it wants you to carry on playing. What this game does have, which is a feature which most indie games of this type do not have, is online multiplayer. I think I'm going to use that a lot, especially to unlock all those extra songs with bonus points and challenges that you get after completing the story mode. It's not to say that I won't be playing it Couch Co-op, I think this game definitely lends itself to it. When I met with Simon at CoxCon and he gave me the chance to play it, I was playing with one of my friends and two randoms. The camaraderie we had between us was just intense, you had to be there for each other to get through it. At the end, we were all just patting each other on the backs, being like, yes, we made it, brilliant. It was wicked. The difficulty is also something I want to talk about in this game. I found the curve to be quite odd. It wasn't your natural progression of this gets harder, here's a peak, here's it getting really hard, here's the final boss where it's super dupe hard. Instead, what we had was this kind of up-down motion throughout the game. Some songs you one-shot, some songs you got stuck on for a bit, some songs kind of in, in the middle, but they're all mixed together throughout story mode. I kind of liked it, but I, I, I do find myself enjoying the natural progression of getting harder. So maybe I was just getting better throughout the game and maybe the natural difficulty line I was kind of outshooting. I, I don't usually feel that way in games, so I'm, I'm thinking probably wasn't that. I had a desire for the game to get harder. It didn't actually take me too long to complete. I managed to wipe through the story mode in less than two hours. I think it's about an hour and three quarters before I managed to complete the story mode. One more thing I would like to see with this game is additional difficulties with songs. 
I think a lot of people will like the soundtrack and possibly struggle completing a track and would never play it because they can't or people would want a higher difficulty, higher threshold with the same tracks. So it really lends itself to, say for example, if there is 20 bullets firing towards you, make them 40, just up the scale a bit. You could do more with this kind of thing and it's something that I would really hope that Berserk Games look to do in the future. And obviously this also unlocks unlimited future potential. If you got signings from other bands or artists where you could collab with and create tracks for songs forever and release it as DLC, as individual songs or packs or whatever you want to do, this game, if popular, will have longevity. I will say with Steam reviews at the moment, uh, recent reviews are overwhelmingly positive and all reviews are also overwhelmingly positive. You know that's a good sign on an indie game if that happens. But lastly, I kind of also want to speak about the aesthetics of this game. It's quite simple. You are a blue square. You are avoiding anything pink. And you kind of think, yeah, that's fine, whatever. Just get it out of the way. Pink is pink, blue is blue, blue is good, pink is bad. Easy mode. No, they have, they've done so much more thought and direction with how they wanted to take how you avoid what spawns. I think it's probably one of the best games, the best beat games, should I say, out there on the market at the moment. Because everything that existed, existed for a purpose, for a story purpose, or for a kind of scenario world building purpose. You really felt as though the obstacles you were playing within the tracks were there for a reason. There was nothing just there just to avoid or because it would just make it more difficult. Everything served a purpose. I've repeated that point a few times, but I think to me, that's quite important. It made the game come to life. I like the fact that the obstacles were produced and made effects based on each other. So for example, there could have been a pool of water or, or kind of beat water, should I call it, probably at the bottom of the level. Something would fall into it, causing a cascade of water to come up towards you, which you had to avoid. Everything interacted with each other. The boss, it's amazing what you can do with just shapes and beats. I guess that's the idea of the game. Well done me, just clocked it. The boss is so simple in its design, but so effective. Looks incredible. There's a level on the kind of creation of the boss, and when you see him come to life, you kind of don't really expect it until it happens. And then like, wow, yeah, there it is. There's the boss. And he kind of grows into something pretty, pretty intense and pretty cool. Every character that you meet along the way has charisma, has this attitude that they like to follow and is consistent throughout. And the boss itself has evil and twisted and fun within him that is just shown throughout. All in all, I would definitely recommend picking up this game. If you have friends to play couch cart with, you'll have a bundle of time, you'll have longevity with it, it'll be something that you'll pick up and play. You've, you will be over and you'll be like, hey man, should we chuck on Shapes and Beats for a few hours? You'll just jam to tracks. If you are going to just go through the story and never play it again, I would question that maybe the price point is a bit too high for you. As I say, it took me under two hours to complete the campaign, but then I know that I'm going to play the playlist version. The, just get some friends over and give it a go. Think about that when you buy into this. At the moment, the UK price is, I think, just over £15. There is some DLC out there as well, which I haven't yet managed to try. And I think that's just more tracks though, which is completely fine with, so I can't really take that into price consideration. Berserk Studio, to me, is definitely a studio that's worth looking out for. Simon told me that he started basically as a Newgrounds Flash game creator, and they've now grown into a company that's produced Shapes and Beats. Keep an eye out on what they're doing next. I'm sure it will be just as incredible. Just Shapes and Beats is available on Steam or Switch. Whichever platform, I'm sure it, it lends itself to it completely. Go out there, buy the game, have some fun, listen to some music, which I don't think I've actually mentioned. The music is its a great lineup. It's an absolute great lineup. If you don't like Tell you what, listen. Go listen to the trailer. Not not right now. After the video, go listen to the trailer. If you like the music, you will love the entire soundtracks. It's got artists such as Boss Fight, 
Chipzel, Nitro Fun, and Trip 40. I've really just got this far into the video without actually explaining the game mechanics. I told you that you need to avoid pink, and that's exactly it. You just move the D-pad around to avoid the pink stuff, and you have a dash button as well that is also invincibility frames. That's pretty much all there is to it. I think in conclusion, one thing that needs to be remembered, and the only thing that really needs to be said, is that this game is fun, this game is cool. That's literally the only things you need to take away from this video. I don't think you need to be into the music, I just think, regardless, you will enjoy this game. It's just so cool. And I hate using that as a descriptive term, but that is the definition of this game. Feels cool. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you got this far, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. If you liked my video, let me know what you think in the comments below. If you don't like my video, maybe don't leave a comment. Just kidding, it would actually be more beneficial if you didn't like my video, if you leave a constructive, I'll, I'll mention that word, constructive comment below. It would help me progress, it would help me get better. If you agree with me or don't agree with me, also let me know in the comments below. If you really enjoyed my video, it would help me as an early starter if you hit that subscribe button. I'm also aware there's something about a bell. If you click that, I'm pretty sure it lets you know when I release new videos, which will be a massive help. Give me a thumbs up, give me a thumbs down, do all that jazz, you know how this works, and I'll see you in the next one.